Dear students, today we will be starting wind power generation. For today's class, we are going to discuss about uh, national and world wind power scenario and classification of different wind turbines and how it works. Now, before we go for wind power generation, let us learn how wind is created. What is the origin of wind? It happens when the absorption of solar radiation on the earth surface and in the atmosphere happens. And as we know, this is completely uneven heating phenomenon. And second condition is the rotation of the earth about its own axis and the motion around the sun. So, these are the primary two regions by which we can create wind. That means, it is completely the uneven heating and cooling has to happen to generate wind. What you can see here in the globe, you can see red color indicates heating and then green color indicates cooling. Because of this heating and cooling, wind is generated. Again, we can consider northern region, southern region and an equatorial part. So, most of the radiation falls in the equatorial places and then heat will dissipate towards north and south. This also contributes to the wind generation. Now, what is wind power? It is the conversion of wind energy into a useful form of energy, such as using wind turbines to make electrical power, windmills for mechanical power, wind pumps for water pumping or drainage or sails to propel ships. You can see the rotation of wind blades. You can see the rotation of the blades of a wind turbine and this figure is intentionally appeared here to show a wind farm. The energy available in the wind over the earth surface is estimated to be 1.6 into 10 to the power of 24 megawatt. The wind turbine blades capture wind energy, a form of mechanical energy and put it to work turning a drive shaft, gearbox and generator to produce electricity. Right? The use of wind turbine has gone long back. In 2000 BC, windmills were used for pumping water in China. During 500 to 900 Anno Domini, windmills were used to mill or used for milling grain, grinding spices. In 1887, first windmill for electricity generation in Scotland was demonstrated. In 1931, Russia constructed the first commercial wind power plant. In 2021, the amount of electricity generated by wind increased by almost 273 terawatt hour. You can see the development of the technology and then the amount of power which is harvested from wind generators. The wind energy is one of the fastest growing renewable energy technologies in terms of install rated capacity. We need to learn something history about the wind power generation. In 1888, 
Charles Brass built first large size wind electricity generation turbine which was 17 meter diameter wind rose configuration 12 kilowatt generator. In 1890s Lewis Electric Company of New York sold generators to retrofit onto existing windmills. In 1920s to 50s propeller type 2 and 3 bladed horizontal axis wind electricity conversion system were developed. In 1940s to 60s rail electrification in US and Europe led to decline in wind energy conversion systems uses because during that time oil was commercialized and it was available in very cheaper price. As far as application of wind turbine is concerned, this can be applied for pumping water, grinding grains, rural electrifications, farming and post harvest applications like uh, water pumping, drainage, food processing and small and medium enterprises applications like small factories for grinding grams, saw milling, food processing and many of the applications. But now modern application what we could see is for electricity generation that to in grid. Of course, we need some kind of storage system to reduce the fluctuation of energy generation and applications and utilization. In the modern era, we are increasing the size of the wind turbines. As you can see from 1990s, it was very short like only 89 feet was the height. Then 2000 you can see 173 feet, 2010 it was 275 feet, then 2016 it was 328 feet and it is expected that by 2035 this is about 495 feet. Okay. So, you can see how size of the power plant or wind turbine is increasing with time. So, scale is increasing and since it has got maturity, so it has got the market like commercialization and always competitiveness is there and now all the wind generators are targeted to provide the energy at the grid. And what is the catalyst for the development is the OPEC crisis in 1970s and which led to economics, then energy independence and then environmental benefit. Okay? And of course, turbine standardization was the primary thing. So, three bladed upwind horizontal axis on a monopole tower was standard and got quite matured or maturity. So, this figure shows primarily the growth in size of typical commercial wind turbines. Okay? So, swift area we can calculate once we know the diameter of the blade or you can say if this is the radius then we can multiply by 2 it will be 2 r which is nothing but the diameter then we can calculate what will be the swift area right. So, as far as early wind turbine designs are concerned so these designs were quite popular 1, 2, 3 design and then these two are vertical axis turbines and these three are horizontal axis turbine. This is two bladed 
this is three bladed and this is multi bladed. Okay? So, we will be discussing more on all these kind of turbines in the coming slides. So, this all turbine installation contributed immensely as far as global wind energy contribution is concerned. The figure shows the wind power generation with time. So, if you consider from 1965, it was very very less and it if you can see in 2000 wind power harvesting is slowly increasing and 2010 you can see the rise compared to 2000 and then you see 2021 it is a huge jump. So, many of the countries are now giving attention to harvest wind energy. So, this is the world wind energy generation and you can see this part is China followed by European Union, United States, Germany, India, UK and Denmark. So far if we see a total of 900 gigawatt of energy has been generated from wind energy. So, that much of installation is already there in the globe. These are the countries which are listed top wind power producing countries in 2021. China produced alone 656 terawatt hour followed by United States it is 384 terawatt hour. India is here which is 68.1 terawatt hour. And if we consider the amount of wind power installed in the year 2022, you will be surprised like China has installed about 366 gigawatt, European Union 203, USA 141 gigawatt, Germany 66, India 42. Spain 29, United Kingdom 29, Brazil 24 and so on and so forth. So, you can see now the many of the countries are harvesting energy from wind by using wind turbines. It may be horizontal axis or may be vertical axis, but mostly wind turbines are horizontal axis wind turbines. Here we can show the region wise wind generation in terawatt hour. This is in terawatt hour. This is for Asia Pacific because China is having huge number of wind generators. Then followed by Europe, then we will have North America, then we will have South and Central America and in Africa. And you can see the rise. If you see from 85 it was very very less and from 2000 it has started giving more attention and in 2020 you can see there is a huge energy is coming from wind. So, in 2021 wind electricity generation increased by a record of 273 terawatt hour. So, this was 55 percent higher growth than that achieved in 2020 and was the highest among all renewable power technologies. And this diagram shows the sector wise electricity generation from renewable energy sources in India. So, wind power is about 34.8 percent, solar is 53.5 and small hydropower is about 3.9 and cogeneration contributes about 8.08. As far as Indian context is concerned, so amount of wind energy generation in India is about 68.1 terawatt hour. 
and it is expected to rise in the coming years. So, wind power accounts for nearly 10 percent of India's total installed utility power generation capacity. So, as far as classification of wind machines are concerned, broadly wind machines are classified into two classes based on the axis of rotation of the rotor and the rotor diameter. So, this axis of rotation of the rotor may be vertical or may be horizontal. If it is vertical, it is vertical axis wind turbine. If it is horizontal, then it is horizontal axis wind turbine. So, again this vertical axis wind turbines are classified into three classes drag based which is known as Savonius wind turbine, lip based which is known as Darius wind turbine and drag plus lip based is known as H rotor. And again lip based wind turbines are classified into two classes egg beater and zero mill. And as far as diameter is concerned, we can classify based on the diameter of the rotor. So, if the diameter is varies from 0 0.5 to 1.25, then it is known as micro turbine, then mini turbine if its diameter is varies from 1.25 to 3, domestic turbine its diameter varies from 3 to 10 meter, then commercial turbines, medium turbine and then large scale turbine whose diameter varies from 50 to 100 meter. So, mostly for large scale wind power generation horizontal axis wind turbine is preferred that to three bladed system. Okay. So, we can have wind farms not only single wind turbine there will be many more wind turbines in a field. So, from that we can generate huge amount of power and vertical axis wind turbines are also useful for generation of power but meeting lower load requirement. These are different wind mills just to show how you can build and then what are different kind in a schematically. This is single bladed horizontal axis, double bladed, triple bladed and this is pump wind mill multi bladed and up wind and down wind. If wind comes and strike here the tip of this rotor and blades are here then it is up wind otherwise if the wind strikes at the back of the wind mill then this is a down wind or down wind wind turbine and we have Savonius, then gyro mills, Darius, Magnus and Vortex. Now, let us analyze the components of a wind turbine. Typically, we are considering a horizontal axis wind turbine. Here, wind has to come here and strike on the rotor. So, this is the rotor part this rotor when you talk about rotor it has blades and the hub and this part is nestle it houses generator and the gear boxes and then we will have this tower. You can see the various components these are the blades, rotor hub is there where these blades are connected, this is brake, gear box and your drive, your motor together we can call it as your mechanism, then controller and anemometer to monitor the wind velocity. So, component wise we can say we have rotor which consists of three blades and a hub. So, hub is here where blades are attached and also we can say hub is something like a mechanical link between the blades and the low speed shaft because what happens this hub is connected with low speed shaft. Okay. Then it will go to the gearbox and then 
from there high speed shaft will be connected with the generator. The nacelle it houses gearbox and the generator this is the generator ok and we will have this tower ok. It may be steel or some other material and if we draw a line parallel to the center of this turbine and the base. So, this height is known as half height. So, vertical distance from the ground to the center line of the rotor is often referred to as the turbine's half height which is required for our calculations and we must know at what height we are installing the wind turbine because as you go on increasing the height wind speed is increasing, but we have to identify the place and the feasibility even though at very high height from the ground wind speed is more sometimes we cannot install wind machine in such location because of some other constraints, but we must know what is hub height at the moment. So, let us learn how it works primarily it has blades then rotor hub is here where blades are attached and this is the tower and grid connection will be here and we have gearbox here then electrical switch box and control will be here and we have induction generator and rotor brake has to be applied. So, we learn many components when to stop the wind machine and when to run ok what is the rated cut in speed cut out speed and rated speed. Now, what happens the turbine blades capture the kinetic energy from wind and convert it into torque that is transmitted to the gearbox here from here to here ok and this is the rotational shaft ok. Through this rotational shaft this kinetic energy of the wind is converted into torque and is transmitted to the gearbox through this rotational shaft ok. And we will have your mechanism this yaw mechanism allows the turbine to rotate on its vertical axis to orient the rotor in the direction of the wind and maximizing energy capture that is the function of the yaw mechanism ok. And then here let us learn carefully this this shaft which is connected to the gearbox is the low speed shaft ok and from here gearbox to the generator it is a high speed shaft right. In the gearbox series of gears are used and it converts this low speed and high torque input from the rotation of the blades to the high speed low torque this is the high speed low torque rotational force that is transmitted to the generator ok. And finally, a transformer is used which increases the voltage from the generator voltage level to the on site collection system voltage that is based on the demand it is set and it is transmitted ok. And this is a tower normally it holds the entire unit and it is made of steel or maybe concrete and strong foundation is provided in order to hold the entire structure. As far as component is concerned prime component is the blades we have to follow many nomenclatures we will be discussing what kind of parameters to be controlled for a good quality turbine blades 
and what are the material used for this for the manufacturing of these turbine blades? It is a fiberglass reinforced polyester or epoxy, carbon fibers are also used and nowadays wood compounds such as wood epoxy or wood fiber epoxy are also seen in utilizing or making wind turbine blades. Then we will have hub, hub looks something like this, blades are attached in the hub okay? and then you can see this is the shaft which connect to the gearbox and we will have generator, normally induction generators are used. So, three classes of generators are available, it may be DC generator, may be synchronous generator or may be induction generator. It has got advantages and disadvantages in using these generators, but mostly induction generators are used for its many advantageous parameters and also we can have different schemes like fixed speed drive or variable speed drive. So, fixed speed drive means at particular speed only rotor will rotate and power will be delivered and in case of variable speed drive, so the system will deliver power at different speeds. So, how this can be configured is a challenge and there are many schemes to do it. So, these are different schemes we can follow for optimizing the performance of a wind generator. Let us broadly classify these two vertical and horizontal axis wind turbines. So, it is something like this, this is vertical axis wind turbine and this is the horizontal axis wind turbine. So, in case of vertical axis wind turbine, generators are placed at the bottom okay? and here very less obstructions are there. Okay? So, there is no heavy items at the top. So, all the heavy items or equipments are housed at the ground level. So, what are the advantages of particle axis wind turbines? So, multidirectional winds are acceptable which reduces system cost and complexity. As I said before, these gears and generators are located at ground level. So, maintenance is very, very easier and it has got less cost in comparison to the horizontal axis wind turbine. There are of course, disadvantages like fatigue failure due to natural resonance and it requires gear rope for support and hence limiting offshore side applications and this system is noisier than horizontal axis wind turbine and vertical axis wind turbine captures less power than horizontal axis wind turbine for the same tower height. In case of horizontal axis wind turbines, we have several advantages like well established technology and highly reliable and this system is able to receive wind with greater speed and it transforms about 40 to 50 percent of received wind power into electricity. It has got some disadvantages like it is difficult to transport, install and maintain because it is very heavy and wind turbine blades are also very long. So, it is very difficult to carry from manufacturing to the installation site and create negative environmental impact such as gigantic drop shadow effect on wildlife and local systems. Of course, nowadays new machines are quite smart and they made it quite nice, nicely to reduce those environmental effects. 
So, we can summarize what we have discussed today. Primarily, we are trying to discuss about the global and national wind energy contributions and the kind of installation is going on and then how this is proceeding and why this is proceeding, why people are so much interested about installation of wind turbines. And also we have studied the classifications and various components involved in a wind machine. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you got information through this video about the wind turbine generation fundamentals. Thank you very much. Thank you.